Hello, this is Sarita, and I'm here to help you understand the truth about who you are. So after the um, V conversation from Friday night, which I posted on all of my platforms, I've had a lot of emails and questions and responses. So I thought I would do a series of videos to address some of them. And today, what I'm going to talk about is love. Where does love come into this? And spiritual bypassing and if you like the love light movement and spiritual gurus because that was something that came up a lot for people and if you haven't seen that conversation um about the v then please don't do please do go and have a look at it but the, the general feeling i got back from people is that it resonated as truth within them and if you know my work you'll know that my work is to help people come to their own sovereignty not to just willy-nilly believe everything that i'm telling them all of the stuff i teach is um, to allow people to have experiences that bring them into their body vessel and discover the truth of who they are within themselves without any external if you like influence that's impinging upon that upon that and that's very difficult um, with what's going on in our world right now because obviously we are so conditioned our reality is so orchestrated and synthetic i call it the inverted matrix because literally everything you look at is the inverse of the truth and in fact what i'm coming to realize is that the very architecture of this reality that can hold the um the infinite flame of who each of us are so that if you like that source expression um needs to be very constrained and contained in order to hold us here in this reality so the nature of the architecture of this reality is, if you like, the antithesis of who we are as humans, as connection to source consciousness. And in that, it, could, it creates a kind of friction and a rub and a pressure that calls us to seek beyond that um, to find the truth of who we are and to burst out of that container. And and the way I look at it is that this architecture, you know, it's really made of kind of zeros and ones. It's very mathematical. It's very synthetic in a way. And source consciousness is not like that. We are not like that. The innate quality of who we are is like, you know, life bursting out as an impulsive response. And so what I wanted to talk about today was how does love come into the question of the V? um the medical procedure because i've had a lot of emails from people and they're generally along the same lines and they say you know we've been taught in the spiritual movement um that love heals all and that that love can save the day and we can't just give up on these people and where does love come into the equation basically so this is true and it can also be spiritual bypassing so basically in terms of love love is the most it's it's the unconquerable force of the multiverse literally that source flame that i talk about which is within our physical bodies within this extraordinary vessel that is the container for the divine of who we are is made of love everything is made of love because creator consciousness or source consciousness is love in expression so it's not the kind of um you know romantic love or wishy-washy love or we'll just send something love because we don't want to hurt its feelings by expressing our truth it's not that kind of love it's it's love is creation and it is super super powerful and dynamic and it's unstoppable and that's who you are 
yet by the same token a lot of what we've been taught within the uh, spiritual community and in fact within its antithesis which is the um the systems that play out within this matrix so government political monetary systems all of that kind of thing they teach us that um love is not that or that we should move away from that unconquerable force of who we are because it is so dynamic it's so impulsive it's so not constrained or familiar and everything within this matrix is trying to constrain us and teach us through the fight or flight mechanism that we must hold on to familiar at all costs because it's safe and love is not safe and what i was alluding to in that conversation about the medicalization was we can't just love light this we can't just send love and hope for the best love is not always pretty love is so supremely powerful and so um unpredictable when it's in its true flame that it is not always soft and sweet although love true love and that unconquerable force can also be in incredibly soft and sweet and everything has its place and space in accordance with how you truly feel and so yes love can heal anything and in fact we are going to have to muster up that true quality and essence of unconditional love which is what we are made of in order to birth forth this new paradigm of existence that we are witnessing and to also have the capacity to let go of the old paradigm the familiar the control the constraint and all of those who choose to leave with the old paradigm as well so those are other facets of love you know there's grief a lot of people are dealing with grief because they know they know deep within the core of their being that they are going to lose their loved ones to that paradigm through the choice of their old loved ones and there is a kind of love in being able to honor other people's decisions so love can heal because love is what creation is made of that's that's basically how it works so with the frequency incredibly high frequency of what unconditional love can do you can recreate a cell anew it's all possible but the problem is many of us think we are running from that love when on actuality we are running from attachment to love which is created by the constraint and restraints of the inverted matrix and all of the mind control that goes on so that's what i was trying to get to in that conversation and so what do you do in these very uncomfortable and challenging situations how do you roll with love um and what I would say is, again, it's got to come back to your sovereignty and your free will to express how you truly feel without any conditions in any given moment as an impulse is love in expression. So in one moment, your true impulse might be to to bring soft sweet and forgiving love to someone and in another impulse it might be to say no fuck off you're not coming near me that's love you know it's so dynamic in different ways and you can't choose in advance how love is going to flow through you and so you're coming back again to this divine vessel of your body and having so much sovereignty within you that you if you like 
feel your way through as the navigation tool for your being in this reality, in everything that's playing out. And that's where surrender comes in because, again, surrender has been corrupted by the, um, you know, the Love Light Brigade and, and spirituality in many forms because true surrender is when that flow of who you are source consciousness is is just coming through you when you are love unrestrained when you don't have to hold back on your truth and when your truth is running without conditions and mind control and patterns of behavior either from your childhood or from cellular or ancestral memory and those things. So I think the tendency can be to spiritually bypass with things like surrender, go, okay, um, this is all just playing out and I'm just going to watch it happen in front of me. Now, if you are truly coming from a place of sovereignty and that's truly how you feel and, and th then that's fine. But if you're trying to surrender because that's what you've been told by other gurus and other books and, and different things like that, and you actually don't feel at the core of your being like just watching it play out in front of you, then that's not surrender coming from sovereignty. It's not real surrender. It's spiritual bypassing. And it's the same with the, with the love. If you're just loving everything because it's easier, because you don't want to face or stand in your own sovereign truth, or because you feel like it's too much to be different or to step into the, the power of who you are, because you, you, you believe that you're just going to love it all and then hopefully that's going to fix it, that's spiritual bypassing. It's pretending that what is in front of you is not actually happening. And so many people do that because it's painful to look at what is playing out, which is clearly horrific on every level. It's horrific physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, and spiritual, spiritually. And why is it horrific? Because we are watching the dredges you know, all the dross and yuck and pus of what we've been holding on to in this paradigm, it's coming up to be cleaned. It's like you've got a container of water with sludge at the bottom and you're shaking it up so that you can then filter off the sludge and you're left with the clean water. And that's what's going on at the moment. It's, it's like a huge universe detox basically and at some point all the yuck has to come up and out that's how you release trauma it's got to be up and out that's how healing is it's got to be up and out because otherwise we are holding it within us and it's incredibly challenging to let go of stuff that we've been holding on to for thousands of years and who we what we've which we thought was us which we thought defined who we were. And we really are in this weird mid place now where if you like the really sludgy last vestiges of yuck and who we thought we were is coming up and it's not just playing out in the reality in front of us, bearing in mind that is a mirror to what's going on within us. We're all feeling this on a deeply personal level. There's a deep cleansing going in, on within all of us. And that's why so many of you are having your biggest issues coming up, your biggest fears, your biggest patterns, your hugest traumas. All of that is coming up, your deepest grief. All of that is coming up because everything out there is a mirror to everything that we've been holding on in here. We are free will beings. We have permissioned everything that's happened within this paradigm. And now we are choosing collectively and individually to let it go. And that's why we're seeing all of this chaos playing out. So it's incredibly challenging to look this kind of um, horror in the face and see it for what it is and take responsibility for your part in it and then to choose another way. And 
we're extraordinary. We're extraordinary beings. We have these physical bodies that contain that divine spark of who we are. And we have the capacity to transmute and transform everything awful around us. We're literally alchemists. We combine the physical and the divine. And when you can see the truth for what it is, recognize it within you and outside of you, you then have the opportunity to transmute it. And that is what is needed. And I think often with spiritual bypassing or choosing to just love in a kind of um, wishy-washy is the wrong word, but to just to love not because anyone's bad, but because to love because it's easier and it feels kinder and more sweet without looking at what really needs addressing doesn't give you or me or one or the collective the, op the opportunity to affect change and to transmute it. And basically, as the paradigm falls away, we've got to build the new one. No one's doing it for us. We can't just go, oh, uh, we're going to float around in love and something will just turn up. It doesn't work like that. We are physical beings. We're embodied beings here on a planet. You know, we chose to have an embodied experience. And so much of what we have been doing has disembodied us. And that brings us all the way back round to the uh, medicalization topic again. There is a reason why they are targeting our bodies because we our creators. We are so incredibly powerful that we manifest using our thoughts and feelings when they are in alignment. And our ability to materialize has been hijacked. It's been enslaved and taken over. And so what we've been doing is we've been materializing for a force that wants us to materialize a specific outcome. We haven't been materializing our reality for ourselves from our true innate sovereign selves. And that's what's been going on. So the mind control has been used so that we use this body vessel to materialize the reality that is required for the force that wishes to, in the end, engulf us within an, a biological digitalization so that it can expand itself and take over. And obviously the cult as the layer beneath that force has its own agenda for the mind control um, and us materializing a reality that suits its purpose. Its agenda is to take power to have loads of money to basically have power um and 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 through that power it wants to extinguish a lot of the human race because it's easier to control when there are less people upon the planet so there are these two kind of um forces trying to get us to use our capacity as love in expression in a perverted way for their own means. And so that's why they've been targeting our bodies because if they can switch off the heart mechanism and keep us in a state of fear, we manifest realities that are in alignment with control and suppression and fear. And so the scenario and the paradigm keeps perpetrating until we've basically done the bidding um, of what is required of us. And luckily, <laughs> loads of people are working this out and we are waking up. But you can't love this away. You've got to be love in action, in the full power of who you are. You can't just send love to the cult leaders and hope that that's going to do it. It just isn't going to do it. We've got to be our embodied, powerful creator selves at this point. And so 
that's what I would say about surrender and love and what bypassing is. It's when you choose to kind of look the other way at what's clear, clearly playing out in front of you and what is clearly within you in terms of your own trauma. And you try and fix it with, you know, surrender and and love it's just it isn't going to work because you're not fully embodied you're not fully being and seeing what is actually going on so there's that aspect and obviously we've had amazing spiritual gurus and there are amazing spiritual teachers out there and they all have messages and ideas for us that we can learn from and including you know i hope to give some information that hopefully people can learn from but you need to be wary of any guru that tells you to follow them unequivocally. That, that's just so the antithesis of sovereignty. That's so the control matrix playing out. And there are gurus out there who say that if you don't do X, Y, and Z and blah, blah, blah each day, then you won't attain enlightenment. Um, be wary of, of those types of gurus and take from everyone and all of the information out there and all information is is just frequency it's coming in through your eyes through your ears through your skin through your senses all of that is just free light frequency information it's intelligence that's coming in you take from that what serves you and dump the rest and that's what i said at the beginning of the medicalization conversation i'm offering information if it doesn't resonate with you drop it but often when we're triggered by information and what i mean by triggered is it immediately puts us into a kind of fight flight or freeze state of being we're like this is really scary if you're triggered it generally points to something within you that you're not looking at you know an energetic block or trauma that you haven't healed within you and that's invaluable just on its own to have a trigger because when you get a trigger it's like oh okay why am i frightened and it is a frightening topic it's horrifying basically and the whole topic is triggering you know we're right at the beginning of this whole scenario that started in January, when I first heard the V word, I knew deep in the seat of who I am that this whole thing was about that. And I had such a wave of horror wash over me, I cannot even explain it to you. It was paralyzing for me. And I have been dealing with that trigger and that fear and that fright the whole way since January. And I heal a bit and then I equalize and then it comes again and I go in and I find that bit and I sit with it and I do all the things that serve me and I'm clearing it and clearing it, clearing it to the point where I can now stand up openly on a platform and go, right, this is where I am. And I'm gonna use that trigger because within me, it's now healed so much that I'm stepping into another level of being able to speak my truth publicly. And, and obviously that's not everybody's road, but that's what happened to me. So if you get a trigger, work with it. It's a very, um, this is, this is really a huge thing. And I've, I've done a, a video on, um, Atlantis, because I think that the reason this is such a huge trigger for many people is we've been through this before with a couple of bad outcomes and we have the cellular memory of that and it's created deep trauma within us. Dolores um, um, Cannon, um, have I said the right? I can't remember if I've got the names right. But anyway, she talks about that trauma from Atlantis and it's very, very clear you can really see it now it's coming up for people so any spiritual gurus i would who tell you that you must behave a certain way i would be very weary of that's the opposite of sovereignty take what you need from people and use it to enhance your own sovereignty your own truth your own inner expression and feeling and i would also say that's the same for any practices or methodologies or meditations um, that you work with take what serves you and um nothing is set in stone it's how is it assisting you take from it what really serves you and 
if something serves you for a little while and then it doesn't serve you any longer, change it. My meditation practice is changing all the time. And nowadays, literally in the last month, I am finding it harder and harder to sit still for hours and meditate. And I'm wanting to move more in my meditation. And I teach walking meditations as well because we're embodied human beings. And I feel that a lot of what's coming is us getting back to nature. If you are struggling at the moment, I would suggest to get in nature. For start, it's the only thing that seems to make sense sometimes. But it's incredibly calming and soothing. And that's because it's you in absolute sovereignty and source expression. It's unbounded and unconstrained. And it shows you a reflection of yourself when you're truly sovereign. And so it makes you feel steady and true and real. So I would give you that advice. So that's what I wanted to talk about with spiritual bypassing and um, and love. Love is what is going to save the day, but it's got to be love for you. Um, actual source consciousness flowing through you. And when you are in that state of love in flow, you know exactly what to do in any given moment. You know exactly how you feel. It may not be um, make any analytical sense to you, but you just know at the core of your being what is the right way. It's your intuition. It's the very thing the medicalization is trying to cut you off from and it's the thing that you don't want to give up at any cost your free will sovereign you know your choice in that moment your your truth in that moment your divinity in that moment so i hope that's been helpful for you um as i said i'm going to keep making more videos answering questions that came from that medicalization video because there are quite a few more so thank you very much for listening if this video was helpful to you um, and you feel called please share it and i will see you again soon